Well, hello everyone and welcome again to Painless Universal, a conversation with myself and Welch. Are you craving more days, more time? Are you craving more money in your bank account? I think this is something that so many people dream of. They just don't know how. How do you go about to get more time, to get more money in your bank account? You're working long hours, but still no return, still no time to spend with your loved ones. My guest today will be telling you how you could achieve this easy, faster, and very smooth as well. Her name is Kate. Kate will be joining us all the way from the United States and she'll be telling us about her own journey, why she started this need and uh, platform to help others who are struggling in their daily day lives and also who need more time but just can't find the time. Are you a mother or a father? Are you, you know, you, whatever you were doing, you just don't seem to have enough time, money. My, Kate, my guest, Kate, will be telling you how she has done this. And she'll be talking about her book as well. But before we go into all of that, let me tell you a little bit about my guest, Kate. Well, my guest, Kate, is a best-selling author of Do Less and Money. A love story, CEO, plan creator, and a business researcher. She's here to explore and share how we could be more relaxed while making the impact we're meant to do on this planet. She created the original company to help inspire an established business owner, work less while having less stress and creating more abundance. Where she is all about making a life, not a living. Her motto is body first, business second. Everything she does these days in the round of business started with her company, the original company. So we are ready to learn more about our guest today, Kate, not Tom, as she tells us her journey and they keep inspiring us to do less and create more time for yourself. Meet my amazing guest, Kate. Well, hello everyone again, and welcome again to Painless Universe, a conversation with myself and Welsh. Today's conversation, as I said in my introduction, is something I believe every person, women especially, should sit down and listen to. You gain one or two things from it. Do you want to light up your world? Do you want more space in your life? Do you want more money, but never know how to because you're just doing too much or never have enough time? My guest today, Kate, not Tom, will be telling us about her own journey and about her own company and why she's, you know, out there helping women succeed. Kate, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Oh, very good. And where are you joining us from, actually? Because we're based in London, England. Where are you? I live in Miami, Florida. Oh, lovely. Nice. Um, and the weather? It's beautiful. I just moved here. Okay. So I'm just kind of getting to know the area and it's raining a lot because it's the tropics, but I love it. Today, we're talking about light up your world um, without burning out yourself. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with. You know, we want our world to be so bright. We want, want, want. Everyone wants something more than what they have. We all, we forget our needs and focus on our wants. Whatever someone else has, we think we need that or we need a bigger fist, we need a bigger house, we need you know, more and more shoes. And you've, you've really gone into this niche area to really help people to, you know, to overcome that struggle and that pain of that need and desire, want it, want it, want it. But before we get into all of that conversation, let's talk about you. Who are you? Who am I? Yes. Well, um, I am a writer, I'm a dancer, I'm a mom, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a CEO, and I am someone who um, just loves to explore and learn and um, always be, you know, always be awakening and learning more. 
In your childhood, when you started on this path where you are today, where you're now helping other women, can you think of anything that led you to this path that made you think, okay, this thing, this thing happened to me? Because normally when we do things, we always see that path that leads to probably something yeah. within ourselves that said to us, oh, you shouldn't, you've conquered it, you've solved your own problem. You probably need to reach out to others and help them in that and you might be going through similar things what led you on this journey well i uh i was raised by two very busy hard-working parents they were both physicians and i always um wanted to spend more time with them and so i always knew i wanted to be a parent and i made a vow to myself I knew I wanted to start my own business so that I would have the freedom to be able to make choices about my own time. And also I can see as I trace back, um, you know, in time, I can see how, what I, what I, what I study, what I teach around productivity and focus and, and doing less to achieve more is really about getting our time back and getting our choice back. So we don't feel beholden to um, obligations and other people's priorities that might not align with what we want. Mm, that is true. So you've created this multimedia digital platform company and you've re you're reaching out to so many millions, um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of women and you know, at, various, at various people around the world who are listening to your, your, work, your work and understanding that this can be done. When you first started, when you first started on this journey, what, um, especially creating a company, because creating a company is never easy for so many people out there. They're trying to do it. And not just creating the company, but also creating an impactful company. How did you start that initiative to turn your company from something of passion to something that really made an impact? Well, it was sort of by accident. I will be honest. I just kept following my curiosity and I kept following my inspiration. And so it started with a blog and then I realized that you could make money with a blog and through, you know, digital marketing. And so I learned about that world and, um, and I just kept talking about what I was passionate about. And it turns out other people were too, you know, I just kept showing up. I think that the biggest element was consistency and just continuing to show up. I, I wish there was like a sexier <laughs> answer, but, um, <laughs> consistency. And then, and then at certain points, you know, at each stage of growth, there's new lessons. So I think one of the biggest stages of growth for me has been letting go of needing to do all the things and allowing people to come in and also shine. And that's been an incredible part of really the last few years, which have been far more focused on building a company as opposed to, you know, just kind of having a, having a, a business that was um, a passion project. I love your homepage um, because you said something about success is nature, uh, nature and, and time is always on your success and nature and time is always on your side. Could you please explain that thinking? Yeah, so one of the things that we practice at the Origin Company is biomimicry. And so it's looking to the natural world for solutions to our human problems. And biomimicry is used in architecture and design and all kinds of different ways, but we use it in the world of business to look at, okay, we have this entire incredible natural world around us, very little of which we understand. We live in these bodies that do all these amazing things, very little of which we understand. And yet we think that all the solutions will come from our mind. But there is such a wisdom and a wealth of information and inspiration going on all around us, not in business books, not on blogs, but outside and also inside our bodies. And so a couple of years ago, I just thought, you know, if the earth is rotating and giving life to all these plants and animals, and it knows how to keep all of that going in a sustainable way without self-destructing, 
perhaps I could use some of that as a model for how I grow my business. And so we look at one of the examples is um, cyclical time. So looking at project management from a seasonal perspective. So as opposed to just a cerebral linear perspective of like, what are all the tasks that need to be done to get this project done? There's a wider context that we bring in around the season. So knowing that each project has four phases that are the same as the seasons. There's, you know, there's the springtime of a project. There's the summertime of the project. There's the autumn and there's the winter time. And in, in business and in our lives, if we look at things seasonally, we yes. know when to step on the gas mm -hmm. and when to step on the brake. And it helps us to prevent burnout because mother nature doesn't burn out, right? It's not like everything just collapses because, because nature has done too much. And so I really started to look at how can we use the natural models of productivity and time management to inform the way we run our businesses. I like that because, you know, it really it ties into our topic, light up your world without burning out yourself. And one of the things I, I really enjoy when I read your page is that you, you really emphasize make a life, a life, not just a living. And I think so many people will understand this, but they're not quite sure how do I get there? For example, someone doing a day-to-day -day job or, or anyone, I want to make a life, but I just don't know how do I do this with, um, you know, with wanting more time, more space in my schedule, more days up, make more days. How do you describe that? Because I love this, honestly, this is the key thing that I truly love about your work is the fact that in today's world, this doesn't seem to ever be enough time but you are telling us now that we can actually do it. So how do we do it in our day life, in our day-to-day -day lives? I mean, there's a lot of different ways to approach it, but first I think it's very important to know what matters to you. What does light you up? Because when we look at the world and our lives and think everything's important and I have to pay attention to everything, we are absolutely destined for failure. But if we say, you know what? What's really important to me are my kids, my marriage, you know, and whatever, whatever the elements are or in our work life to know, okay, what actually moves the needle, what actually gets me the results are X, Y, and Z. And all of this other stuff I'm doing just to look busy or because I've been taught that I have to spend a certain number of hours with my, you know, with my computer open a day, but we have this idea that we've been brainwashed to think that the more hours you do something, the more successful you'll become. And that's not necessarily the truth. Now, maybe if you're practicing basketball or your slap shots, like that is true, <laughs> but checking email, like it doesn't work that way. Right? Oh. It doesn't work that way at all. And so it's really getting clear on what matters to you and what lights you up and then setting boundaries. So one of the things I recommend is having personal no policies so that you're not every time a new opportunity or a request comes in, you're not deciding every single time, but you have policies to lean on. And we do this in our company too. So we just like, we just don't do this sort of thing. I don't take appointments on Tuesdays. Like I just have a Tuesday appointment free day. We don't work on Fridays in the summer in my, com in my company. It's not like every single time there's an opportunity on a Friday, are we going to do it? Are we not going to do it? No, we just don't do that. And so that is incredibly relaxing because as people, um, like myself, who I really do want people to like me. Like, I wish I would get over that, but I haven't yet. And so it's so helpful to have policies to lean on and that have been pre-decided. So you're not depending on your willpower and your decision power in the day, because we have a limited amount of that. Mm -hmm. And instead you've decided up front that these are your policies. And of course you can change your policies if you want to, mm -hmm. but it makes it so much easier. Like, okay, I know for myself that one night a week, I'll go out with my husband and one night a week, I'll go out with friends. But mm -hmm. five nights a week, I'm home with my kids because otherwise I get exhausted. They, they miss me. Like it's a whole thing. So that's a policy for me. And then I can fit my life into the policy as opposed to just being reactive based on what somebody's asking of me. That is so true. Because I was, I always wondered why the hairdressers um, had, had to give appointment, but not Sundays or Mondays or, you know, they always had this really clear boundaries and it doesn't matter how much you ask them. Can you please fit me in? No, no, no. 
no, I don't work that day. I don't, I, I don't work on that day. It's just nothing I could do. And I never figured out what was, well, I do it doing. Why would, you know, I just thought like, come on, don't you want the business? Don't you want to do it? And, you know, looking back now, I understand why. If you never make time for yourself, I think you just never would know how to set that clear policy. And what you've just said, Kate, really, really, um, it really emphasized the point that a lot of people think that is one gap in a lot of people's lives is that policy we tend to say yes because we think by saying yes we'll get more popular we'll get more done not realizing it burns us out more easily so i I love that you know you're an entrepreneur you're a best-selling author and you are a mother and wife can you describe the pain you've been through to get yourself um, to achieve this massive success you've achieved because you know you you're doing so well but normally when people are authors, you wrote your book in 2019 and 2013, when there's being a mother, how do, what, what kind of, how do you go overcome the challenges of all this to be um, this successful? Well, um, a lot of it is knowing how to manage time and knowing that time management is not about fitting more into the day. Yeah. To me, it's about fitting a few important things into the day Mm -hmm. and getting to a place internally where I'm okay with not doing everything. You know, people say like, how do you get it all done? And I'm like, I don't get it all done. Sometimes there's a lot of laundry that's not done. And I'm just like, well, that's okay. Sometimes my house does not look tidy or as tidy as I would like. Sometimes dinner is incredibly simple. Like sometimes for dinner, I make rice noodles with butter. (laughs) So, you know, it's just really like, I don't think we can be an A plus in every area of our life. I think sometimes we have to be okay with being a B some or a B minus in certain areas. Um, it's fine. (laughs) <laughs> you know, because I, I love the, um, Nancy, I think it's Nancy Myers had a wonderful quote that, um, somebody asked her about juggling everything. And she said, you know, we have to know that, um, all of us are juggling balls, but we have to know that some of them are made out of rubber and some of them are made out of glass. And we just have to know which ones are, which, because yeah. you are going to drop the ball yeah. for sure, but you just have to make sure you're dropping the right ones. That's yeah, sure. Uh, your YouTube channel, you talk about wants and needs. Um, I think you gave that very nice story about the fridge, wanting, um, thinking you needed a bigger fridge. How do you, you know, when you're so, when people, when we're in this need, I think so many women, especially, go through this phase. And I don't, I'm not quite sure about the men, but I know it's a woman problem because we always tend to want something. We see something we want. How do you define that so we can start being contented with what we have? and then mm. and start having more money because I think this is a key thing that's key and really dis- harming so many women today because we want one for one and then we realize oh my god it's day six of the month we have no money left because what well, we spent it all on our wants and not realizing the key, key things which was truly our needs how do we how do we define that it's a harm? great question and I think that uh, it really has to do with expanding our capacity to be with ourselves so often wanting external things is about trying to fill a void in ourselves like this feeling of if i get this thing then i will feel complete but the truth is no amount of stuff is ever going to make us feel complete in fact no relationship no amount of business success no amount of anything external is ever going to make us feel whole and so if you're wanting to um you know, get a handle on your spending it or get a handle on your time or really get a handle on anything. It really is about building the relationship with yourself, like learning to love your own company. And th- that's been a struggle for me. I am an extrovert. I love being around other people, but for me, um, the practice has been about like being in nature and being in my body. So it always comes back to I'm not actually alone because I'm here in the natural world. And these are, you know, my spiritual practice uh, fills me up, prayer, meditation, um, connecting with the divine, and then really connecting with the divine through nature. So just looking at the clouds, looking at the trees, 
listening to the noises going on in my backyard, going to the ocean, looking out at the ocean. Um, those things really have helped create that sense of I'm okay now. Mm -hmm. And then different embodiment practices that I, that I do, um, that I highly recommend and healing, healing the nervous system and learning to be in our bodies. And when we do that, then it doesn't mean you can't go shopping. <laughs> That's not the point at all, but yes. it, it, there's a level of discernment that comes on board that wasn't there before. So it's like, oh, I want that jacket. It's, it's beautiful. And if it doesn't make sense this month with my budget, I'm not feeling like I'm a failure. I'm not feeling like, you know, I'm going to completely lose out that I'm, you know, whatever. It just doesn't really matter. It's like, I could have it or I could not have it. I am whole and complete already. And obviously, you know, learning to be in beautiful relationship with yourself is a lifelong practice. That's not like a three tips to, you know, whatever, but it's really the, it's like the most important work and it really makes everything better. I agree. I learned that the hard way as well, because I had to, um, it got to a point where there's no more space to put clothes in. And I had to realize, I had to say to myself, come on, do you really, really have to keep going for once? So I had to really teach myself, go back to reality, go back to my healthcare needs and say, what's truly important and that appreciating what I already had rather than once and once and once. And then, you know, occasionally you give yourself a treat, but it wasn't something sure. I had to do the whole time, all the time I was so, oh gosh, I see something, oh, this is new, this is, uh, uh, and I just felt my mind in my own closet, which is awful. So I just, every time you feel like you needed to get something new just to um, satisfy your own inner desire, which was not relevant. So I'm so glad we, we touched on that subject because I think it's not just myself. It's just so many other women out there who just feel the need to want. And that leads me to my next question, which is about, you have this ambition of helping other women. And I love that about you. You say this in your, open in your website, my, my real ambition is helping other women succeed, achieve success, especially in the area of time and energy management. Energy, you focus on energy. Uh, what advice would you give on getting started on the path to success? Yeah, well, when it comes to time and energy management, it's really important to know that if you're not managing your energy, you're not going to be able to manage your time well, because if no amount of fitting things into a schedule is going to help you do the things that you need to do or be present and show up if your energy is all over the place. And when we manage our energy properly, um, the time piece just sort of works itself out. And so one of the things I recommend for women uh, who have a menstrual cycle is to actually track your menstrual cycle and, and what is really important to know is that we have these four unique phases of the menstrual cycle, which I talk about a lot in my book, Do Less, and then um, is part of the basis for the Do Less Planner system, that each of the phases of our cycle is like one of the four seasons. So we're talking back about seasons. So we have a personal springtime every month. We have a personal summertime. We have an autumn and we have a winter and our hormones are primed for different kinds of activities. Um, and our, our, uh, neurologically, you know, mentally, we are also primed for different kind of ways of thinking and ways of being at different times of the month. And so one of my top tips for energy management is understanding where you are in your cycle and then organizing your time so that the tasks that are most appropriate for that season fall during the time when you are feeling the best for that kind of activity. For example, if you're somebody who has trouble getting started on things, doing that uh, between you know day five and 10 mm -hmm. of your cycle is going to be the best time for it because that's the time when your brain is most wired for taking initiatory action. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're not having a menstrual cycle, you can actually track with the moon because the lunar cycle is 28-ish days also, and also has those same four phases. It's a little more subtle, but it's a nice, um, organizing principle for all of us so that we don't feel just like every day is like groundhog day. And it's like, ah, I'm just supposed to get all this stuff done. How could I possibly keep it organized? Yes. Oh, that's really interesting. Your book, um, you just talked about it, a love story and uh, what you did in 2013 and you did the do what, um, do, do less in 2019. 
Um, and this acts as a guide, a guide in quest for finan uh, financial freedom. So, for anyone who's out there looking for any kind of financial freedom, looking to, to get more out of life, I think your book is highly recommended. Um, writing is never easy, but what drove you on this path to write these two wonderful best selling books and also give out this um, good advice to people out there who are willing to read and understand your, your methods? Yeah. So um, Money, A Love Story, I wrote uh, based on my own experience of getting into a lot of debt and then uh, figuring out how to pay it off in a relatively short period of time without the typical tactics that people use. I mean, obviously, if you want to get out of debt, you need to either increase your income or lower your expenses. <laughs> That's kind of obvious, but <laughs> um, <laughs> it does work. But there are so many people who know that, but can't actually stick to the behaviors. No. And so Money, A Love Story really goes into an unusual perspective, an unusual um, approach to handling our money from the emotional side so that our behavior actual, actually changes. And so it was based on my own story and knowing that I wasn't the only one who struggled in this area with impulsivity and um and financial avoidance. I was really a financial avoider. And so that's where money, a love story came from. And then do less, um, came from my experience of becoming a mom and, um, really needing to shift dramatically the way I approached time and work and my worth and knowing that if we aligned ourselves, when we align ourselves with the cycles and seasons of nature and some specific data-driven productivity tactics, uh, we really can get what matters done in a less time than we think we really can. Um, it's not magic no. and it's not only for certain kinds of people. We really, you know, there's nothing in the book do less that suggests it's not like about, you know, sometimes women see the title and they're like, assume that it's tips about like getting a housekeeper and, you know, hiring a bunch of people to help you. It's, it's not, not that that's a bad thing. Do that if you can, but it's really things that all of us can do to make a difference in the way we approach our schedule and in the way we think about time and the way we relate to time so that everything, um, be, get, gets smoother. Mm. I love the bunny, a love story, because I think it's such a critical thing, especially with the pandemic and people's income being, you know, some people not having stable jobs, not having, um, not knowing the um, price of things, uh, inflation going on in the world right now, things, price of goods going up so much. The money love story in the book, um, it went, when someone read it, will they get the practical guide, um, your real life? Because I think uh, what I love about books is when people are so honest, and I think I started reading some part of your book, The Money Love Story, and it gives it, I want it coming from you. You, you give practical advice on how to really get the mind to change its concept because it's also a lot, of, a lot to do with the mind to change that concept because sometimes it's not even about making more money or making less. It's about changing that mind about what yeah. we said at the beginning to want, to want less. Focus on what you already have and be grateful so you don't want too much. I don't know what you want to say more about the book. Yeah, absolutely. So Money, A Love Story has, it walks you through exercises to actually make the changes. So it's not just theoretical. Yeah. Every chapter has many exercises that you can, you can practice and make those practical changes. So I really walk you through step-by-step, step, do this, then do this, you know, and I, I, I've had so many people uh, write to me or come up to me at events. You know, one woman um, recently spoke to me and just was like, you know, your book helped me pay off $75,000 worth of debt. Mm -hmm. And she had never been able to do it before mm -hmm. because the way that personal finance is taught, it ignores the fact that we have feelings and we need to really understand that, um, that money is a deeply emotional subject. And anybody who tries to ignore that is missing a huge piece of the puzzle. And it's why some personal finance advice doesn't work. Okay. That's pretty good. Our final question is that, um, you know, you're doing all these wonderful things, helping so many people. What next for Kate? What are you going to do next? Um, you've written this amazing book, do less. You've done, you've talked about money. What less, what can women look up to, look forward to in your next mission? 
Oh my goodness. I have so many ideas always. Um, I have an app that I want to develop. Um, I have this planner system that I want to expand because to me, if you get people on a daily basis, shifting the way they are scheduling and relating to time that actually shifts their entire lives. And then it shifts our culture. Um, I'm really here to help women connect with their power and know how to use that power in positive ways. And so much of our power relates to what we do with our time. And so um, all kinds of expansion of the ways we do that is what you can look forward to. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Kate, for your time. I really enjoyed talking to you. And I actually learned a lot as well. Yeah, so I'm thank grateful. You, yeah. uh, I'm grateful because I think the more you do things like this, the more we, more I think more women would find that gratefulness because they it would it, this you truly are doing something uh, really uh, marvelous work that will help so many women in finding their own joy. Thank you. Thank you.